Good morning and welcome to St. Matthew's and Morning Prayer on this Wednesday, the 10th day of March. Morning Prayer, Rite 1, begins with an opening sentence on page 38 of the prayer book. From the Gospel of Luke, I will arise and go to my Father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. From the book of Daniel, to the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him, neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God, to walk in his laws which he set before us. We continue with the confession of sin. Uh, we turn to page 41. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue with the Invitatory Psalm. We will read together the Venite, which begins on page 44 of the prayer book. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. We worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. Continue with the psalm appointed for today. We're going to read a portion of Psalm 119, beginning at the 97th verse. That uh, can, you can find that beginning on page 771 of the prayer book. Oh, how I love your law. All the day long it is in my mind. Your commandment has made me wiser than my enemies, and it is always with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your decrees are my study. I am wiser than the elders because I observe your commandments. I restrain my feet from every evil way, that I may keep your word. I do not shrink from your judgments, because you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste. They are sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your commandments I gain understanding. Therefore I hate every lying way. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips, and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. 
Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. I hate those who have a divided heart, but your law do I love. You are my refuge and shield. My hope is in your word. Away from me, you wicked. I will keep the commandments of my God. Sustain me according to your promise that I may live, and let me not be disappointed in my hope. Hold me up, and I shall be safe, and my delight shall be ever in your statutes. You spurn all who stray from your statutes. Their deceitfulness is in vain. In your sight, all the wicked of the earth are but dross. Therefore, I love your decrees. My flesh trembles with dread of you. I am afraid of your judgments. We continue with uh, the first reading assigned for today in this third week of Lent. And the reading from the Old Testament is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 8, beginning at the 18th verse. My grief is beyond healing. My heart is sick within me. Hark the cry of the daughter of my people from the length and breadth of the land. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king not in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and with their foreign idols? The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the wound of the daughter of my people is my heart wounded. I mourn and dismay has taken hold, hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has the health of the daughter of my people not been restored? Oh, that my head were waters and my eyes a fountain of tears that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I had in the desert a wayfarer's lodging place, that I might leave my people and go away from them. For they are all adulterers, a company of treacherous men. The bend of their tongue like a bow, falsehood and not truth has grown strong in the land. For they proceed from evil to evil, and they do not know me, says the Lord. Let every one beware of his neighbor, and put no trust in any brother. For every brother is a supplanter, and every neighbor goes about as a slanderer. Every one deceives his neighbor, and no one speaks the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. They commit iniquity and are too weary to repent keeping <clears throat> oppression upon oppression and deceit upon the deceit. They refuse to know me, says the Lord. We continue with the first canticle, Canticle 14, a song of penance. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. 
for all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory of ages to ages. Amen. We continue with the second reading. It comes to us from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 5, beginning at the very first verse. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in our hope of sharing the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. <clears throat> and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us. While we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Why? One will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man one will dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still... <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. God shows his love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we are now justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we have been reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Not only so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have now received our reconciliation. The word of the Lord. We continue with Canticle 4, the Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our father Abraham that he would give us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> we continue with the Apostles' Creed uh, and affirming our faith, which begins on page 53. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit let us pray. We begin with the Lord's Prayer, followed by Suffrages B. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and <clears throat> forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, <clears throat> and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Thou art safe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. We continue with the colics. O God, the King Eternal, who dividest the day from the night and turnest the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep thy law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done thy will with cheerfulness while it was day, we may, when the night cometh, rejoice to give thee thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we surely, trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit <clears throat> the whole body of thy faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before thee for all members of thy holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and godly serve thee. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Take a moment to offer our prayers and thanksgivings. We pray for all those whose lives are connected to ours, especially for those facing any illness or any challenge or difficulty. Let me take a moment to give thanks for the blessings of our lives. And we give some time to think of those things that are most close to our hearts this morning. Gracious God, for all our prayers spoken and those that reside deep in our hearts, we lift them up to you this day. We conclude our prayers by saying together the prayer of St. Christostom, which can be found on page 59. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining Morning Prayer Day. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Thursday. God bless.